Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Arta and today we're creating this project by combining Cloth3D and Blender. In this first part, we'll focus on Cloth3D process and in the second part, we'll cover exporting, landscape creation and working in Blender. So let's jump in. First, bring an avatar from the library. I already have my dash character ready to go. Using the polygon tool, draw a shape like this and if you need curve points, hold down Ctrl key while creating them. Right click on this edge and select Unfold Symmetric Editing. Make a copy of the pattern with Ctrl plus C, Ctrl plus V for the back piece. Adjust its position in the 3D window and start sewing. Don't forget to simulate. Just hit the little arrow in the 3D window or press space on your keyboard. Now let's add some internal lines to both patterns. Copy the existing fabric, choose Trim Full Grain Letter for the fabric preset and assign these patterns to the new fabric. Make sure to simulate after any change to see how it affects the garment. Adjust points as needed, then select all internal lines and choose Cut and Sew. Bring the second fabric's opacity all the way down to zero and assign these patterns to the first fabric. If you want to rush the effect, scale up your pattern slightly before adding elastic. Hold shift, select the segments and enable elastic in the property editor. Lower the ratio, simulate and tweak the particle distance for better results. Keep adjusting both the patterns and the ratio until you're happy with how it looks. Add another internal line to both patterns and enable elastic there too. Now add a rectangle and adjust its size. Hold down shift key and select these two segments, then distribute 14 internal lines between them. While the internal lines are still selected, right click and select extend and add point to pattern outline. With the pleats fold tool, drag to create an arrow, then adjust the internal line count to 3 in the pop-up window. Strengthen the rectangle, then use the pleat sewing tool to sew the segments to the rectangle. Repeat for the other side. Duplicate the first fabric and tweak its properties for a softer and drapier effect. Lower the pattern's particle distance, resize it if needed, and simulate. Strengthen the rectangle and simulate. Hold Ctrl key, select both fabrics and increase the friction value to prevent slipping. Select an internal line and click four times on it to select all the internal lines in that pattern and then delete them. Simulate again, then use the hand tool to shape the fabric manually. Copy the pattern for the back. Delete all the previous sewings using the free sewing tool and repeat the pleat sewing process. If you want, you can also use the free sewing tool to sew a small part of the rectangle to a small part of the top. For the waistband, add a new rectangle, shorten the top segment, and use arrangement points to position it around the avatar's waist. Select the avatar, lower the skin offset in the property editor, and increase friction values for better fabric behavior. Sew these segments together and simulate. If the fabric gets stuck in the avatar's body, use the Select Mesh Box tool to fix it. Add elastic to the top segment of the waistband, 
resize it, simulate, and lower the particle distance. Then distribute three internal lines between these two segments. Delete the middle one and apply elastic to the others. Lower the particle distance once again and make sure your pattern's mesh is set to triangle. Then keep tweaking the ratio to get the desired shape. With the ellipse tool, click in the 2D window and set the circumference to around 300 or 400. Add an internal ellipse, set its circumference to 100 or 200 and convert it to a hole. Draw two internal lines connecting the hole to the outer ellipse, hold shift and cut both. Delete the extra pattern, then adjust points and segments as needed. Position the shape in the 3D window, then sew the whole part to the rectangle waistband. Simulate and stitch the scared pieces together. Keep adjusting the shape until you're happy with it. Now hold down shift key and select the scarce outline and enable elastic. This time increase the ratio instead of lowering it. Then simulate to create a ruffle effect. If needed, use care points to refine the skirt silhouette. Keep adjusting until the whole outfit looks good. I also added another internal line here with lower elastic ratio and added more elastic internal lines on different parts to create a more interesting shape. To add more details to the skirt, add a rectangle, sew it to the skirt's internal line, adjust its size, and add elastic to these two segments, then simulate. Shorten the top segment slightly and make sure that the pattern is assigned to the last fabric. Lower its particle distance and switch the mesh type to triangle. The shape looks good, but let's push it even further. Select these two segments, use offset pattern outline and set a distance of 50 or more. Select these new lines, trace them as internal shapes, and sew them to the internal lines. Simulate. It'll look messy at first, so reset the 3D arrangement and simulate again. I wanted the pattern to be longer, so I repeated the same process. 
Select the segments and add elastic with a high ratio and let it simulate. This part might take a bit of time. Do the same for the other part as well. Add a care point here and shake the segment for a better flow. Now add another rectangle. Sew it to this internal line using the free sewing tool, then select the segments of the rectangle and add elastic with a high ratio value. I lower this particle distance here, but honestly it's better if you don't go too low. It can mess up the simulation later. Maybe keep it around 14 or 15. With Ctrl plus D, make a symmetric pattern of the rectangle and sew it to the other internal line. Make a few more copies of the rectangle, adjust their sizes so you have a mix of different dimensions, and sew the top parts together. Do the same for the left side of the skirt as well. Next, add an internal line to the skirt like this. Make a copy of the three rectangles, shrink them down a bit, and sew one of them to the internal line. Mirror the internal line and the three small rectangles using Ctrl plus C, Ctrl plus R, then sew one of the rectangles to the mirrored line and let it simulate for a bit. If any rectangles look too long or too short, adjust their size accordingly. Now for the sleeves, add another rectangle. Adjust its 3D position, sew it to the drapery part of the top pattern. The sewing lengths don't need to be exact, so don't stress too much over that. Add elastic to these segments, lower the pattern's particle distance, and set the mesh type to triangle. Simulate and tweak the pattern until it looks good. And again, add another rectangle. Yep, at this point, this tutorial is just adding more and more rectangles. Anyway, change the bottom segment's length to make it a bit longer, and with the help of arrangement points, position the pattern around the avatar's arm. Sew the segments together, change the layer number of the other rectangle to one just for now, simulate for a couple of seconds, and then set it back to zero. Sew these two segments together as well, and you know the drill. Add elastic, lower the particle distance, set the mesh type to triangle, keep tweaking the pattern, and if you want even more ruching in the sleeve, just add another internal line. Also add elastic to this bottom segment as well. Select these two patterns and hit Ctrl plus D to create symmetric patterns and let's just pretend that I didn't forget to sew the sleeves to the top parts. I didn't quite like how the drape was looking so I deleted the internal lines and just extended the sewings. Now this part is sped up since it's the same process as before, just copying rectangles, adjusting their sizes, but this time instead of sewing them to the skirt, we're sewing them to the drape pattern. The simulation might take a while and you may need to fix things manually here and there, so just be patient.
If the rectangles start causing too many issues, try increasing their particle distance. Once everything looks right after simulating, select all the patterns except these rectangles and lower their particle distance. Let them simulate for a bit and then go ahead and change your avatar's pose. Hold down Ctrl key and select all the fabrics, then add a texture you like. I'll link the texture that I'm using down below in the description. Make a copy of the last fabric and bring down its opacity to zero, and yep, you guessed it, another rectangle. Make the bottom segment longer and sew the size of the rectangle to the waistband. To make the simulation run smoother, I'm shifting these rectangles around a bit in the 3D window. Distribute some internal lines between these two segments and from the object browser select a button and in the property editor choose the same button I'm using or pick one you like. Then adjust its size however you want. Using the button tool click to add a button to the new pattern. Switch to the edit button tool. Hit Ctrl plus C, Ctrl plus V and right click. In the pop-up window, increase the number of buttons and hit OK. Select all the buttons you just added and do the same. Make some duplicates. In my case, I made three duplicates. Select all of the buttons, turn off their collision and change their render type to silk. Now make a copy of this pattern and sew it to the top. Adjust the patterns and buttons as needed and if any part of the outfit gets stuck, use the Select Mesh Box tool to fix it. If things are really stuck, you can always stop the simulation completely and just move the patterns manually. You might also need to delete some buttons to make the overall outfit look better. Just tweak things until it feels right. I thought three rows of pearls for the top part would be enough, so I deleted the last row. Once you're happy with how your outfit looks, stop the simulation, select all your buttons, right click and choose reset 3D position. And that's it! That's how we created this garment in Clow 3D. In part 2, we'll go over how to bring our garment into Blender and build an environment for it. Thank you for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to check out my other videos.